good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time or from wherever you are joining with us for this online service, we're delighted to have your company. And I do hope and pray that this will be a time of rich blessing for us all as we gather together to worship God. I know I say this every week, but I know that there are people gathering together around their television sets or around their computers to listen in and to share with us on our online worship. For while we may be separated from one another, we may be distant physically, nothing can separate us from the love of God. A little later in our reading from John's Gospel, we'll hear how Jesus prayed, keep them safe, Lord, by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that we, they may be one, just like you and I are one. Let us join our voices together in praise and worship as we sing the words of Psalm 145. O Lord, thou art my God and King. And the words will be on your screens. And for those listening in this morning on the audio broadcast, hopefully they will also come up on your computer. Let's sing together. Let's worship God. Let's come together before God in our prayers. Loving Heavenly Father, we come today to worship you, each from our confines of our and safety of our homes, some of us with family members at our side, others alone. But we come together in your name, for you have promised where two or three gather in your name, you shall be present. Today we come and give thanks for all that you have provided for us, for the comfort of our homes, for the food on our tables, for our health care. Remember today those who do not have the privileged lifestyles that we have, and we recognise that others in our land and in other nations do not have access to a safe home or food, to clean water or to health care. In these days of lockdown, we are also very much more aware of the, of the environment and the beauty of nature. The sounds of birds singing, 
the sounds of the rain, the wind blowing in the trees, the lovely sights of lambs or calves in the surrounding fields of our village, the delicate colours of flowers in our gardens. We have so much to give thanks for, Lord, and we ask that we may never take this beauty for granted again. Loving God, in this time of lockdown, we ask that you will give us strength and endurance to face each day. And we ask that you will help us to control our frustration and our tempers when things don't go the way that we wish they would, or when we can't do things or be with the people that we long to be with. Loving God, help us to follow in Jesus' example and to love others, to trust in you, and also to believe in the transforming power of the resurrection and through it to have confidence and hope, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones. Hear this our prayer, which we offer in Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen today we have two new testament readings and margaret briggs is going to read these for us let us hear the word our first reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16, reading from ther verse 31 and on into chapter 17, reading to verse 5 and verse 11. Jesus answered them, Do you believe now? The time is coming and is already here when all of you will be scattered, each of you to your own home, and I will be left all alone. But I am not really alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you this so that you will have peace by being united to me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave. I have defeated the world. After Jesus finished saying this, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that the Son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all people, so that he might give eternal life to all those you gave him. And eternal life means to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Father, give me glory in your presence now, the same glory I had with you before the world was made. And now I am coming to you. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, Holy Father. Keep them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one, just as you and I are one. Our second reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, reading verses 6 to 11. When the Apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, the times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when they will be. 
But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away, when two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. Amen. And may God add his blessings to these readings of his holy word. Amen. Thank you, Margaret. I would like to thank Stephen Henderson for leading our worship last week and for allowing me to take a couple of days off to catch up with things. Last week, Stephen, Jim Blair and I should have been at the General Assembly. But like so many other events, this was cancelled in view of the current pandemic. I know that I was very disappointed not to have had the opportunity to go to the General Assembly, especially to be able to catch up with friends, to be part of discussions and conversations, as well as being involved in some future decision-making of the National Church. It's important that we're able to talk and communicate with one another. This forms very much part of our lives, our social interaction, but as we've seen, that social distancing does not mean that we can't stop talking. And we're finding all sorts of alternatives, like our recent Coffee Stop Zoom sessions and the Sunday School Zoom catch-ups, when we're able to, through the medium of the internet, chat and talk and with one another. In our first reading from John's Gospel, it records part of a conversation that Jesus had with his disciples on the night of his arrest. And Jesus tells them, the time is coming when you will be scattered, each to your own home, and I will be left alone. In this conversation, Jesus was predicting his arrest and the abandonment of his disciples as they would run away in fear. They would run and hide behind closed doors, while Jesus underwent interrogation, humiliation, and ultimately crucifixion. But this prediction also reveals a promise, for Jesus states, I will not be alone, because the Father will be with me. Last week, Stephen spoke about our lifelong faith, trusting in God, our Heavenly Father, in the good and in the bad moments of our lives, in the mountains and in the valleys of our emotional times. Jesus tells them, I have told you this so that you will have peace by being united with me. Jesus goes on to make another revelation that the world will make you suffer. Again, with this negative prediction comes another promise, a positive promise. Be brave. I have defeated the world. Here Jesus is manifesting his purpose to de defeat sin and death. Jesus then, John tells us, pauses and he looks up to the sky and he prays, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that the Son may give glory to you. Jesus is praying for strength to endure what he knows he's about to suffer. His time is running out. The temple guards are on their way. The Jewish leaders have made their plans. 
to get rid of him. And Jesus says, my work is finished. Now I'm coming to you. Jesus knows what awaits him. He's done all that he can to reveal the love of the Father. But there's one more act, one more thing that he must do. And that is his sacramental death on the cross, his life given for us. And even though Jesus knows that he is a condemned man, he prays for his disciples. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the same name that you gave me, so that they may be one, just as you and I are one. Today is Ascension Sunday, when the church celebrates Jesus' return to his Father in heaven. And we heard of this in our second reading from Acts chapter 1, when Luke, the author, describes how the disciples who had gathered with the risen Lord witnessed him being taken up to heaven. Often this is depicted in early Christian art by images of Jesus dressed in white, rising into fluffy white clouds while the disciples look and gaze upwards. For many Christians today, this is one of the passages of scripture that causes us to feel a little uncomfortable, uncertain. Did Jesus really glide up to heaven? One thing that we do know from the passage is that this was certainly the last conversation that Jesus was to have with his disciples. For this event took place 40 days after the resurrection and after Jesus had revealed himself on several occasions to the disciples or to other followers. His appearance to the grieving women, a short distance from the tomb, as recorded by Matthew and Mark. The Emmaus road encounter, as described by Luke, and the visits to the frightened apostles, apostles in the locked upper room in Jerusalem, as documented by John. During this period of time, many biblical scholars believe that Jesus has spent time with his disciples, teaching them, preparing them for their own ministry, to be evangelists, to go, to proclaim the good news message, and to share God's love with others. Now it was time for Jesus to leave and to return to the Father, for his mission was accomplished, his earthly work was finished. In our second reading from Acts, Luke tells us that the apostles had gathered together on the Mount of Olives, and they asked him at that time, Lord, Will you at this time give back the kingdom back to Israel? They wanted to know what was next. What did the future hold? During this time of lockdown, in response to the coronavirus pandemic, we've all been watching, listening to news bulletins, waiting to hear if there's going to be changes to the restrictions. We become familiar with the terms exit strategy, route map, for we all want to know what comes next. Everything in life has a beginning and an end, including situations. And just like children on a car journey, we want to know, are we nearly there yet? And this was the same with the disciples. They were no different than us. They wanted to know what was next for them. However, Jesus replied to them, the times and occasions are set by my Father's authority. And it's not for you to know when this will be. Jesus was telling them and telling us today to trust in God. For in God's hands are our destiny. But Jesus gives them the assurance that when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled 
with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After this, Luke tells us, Jesus was taken up to heaven. And so from this passage, it's revealed that Jesus' closing words to his disciples were a promise and a pledge. You will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me all over the earth. It's then that the two men dressed in white enter into this narrative. And we assume that these were angels or messengers of the Lord. For similarly, a few weeks earlier, the women who stood stunned and transfixed by the empty tomb were greeted by two men in shining clothes who asked them, why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? Likewise, the disciples are now being challenged and questions, questioned, why are you standing looking up at the empty sky? Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way as you saw him go to heaven. Luke tells us that after this, the disciples went back to Jerusalem, to the room that they were staying in, and together with other believers, they prayed, and there they remained until the day of Pentecost, and the promised Spirit would come upon them. During that time, a bit like us during lockdown, they had time to reflect. Time to think. Jesus had left them, but he had not abandoned them. For they were promised that God would be with them and that they would receive the help and power of the Holy Spirit. Last week, my parents received a little leaflet from the Otego exercise group, which they attended here at the Cornerstone until uh, lockdown. And... It states, we may be in lockdown, but this is not sit down. In other words, they're being encouraged to keep active. And we too, as Christians, are in lockdown. We may not be able to meet for worship in the church, but that doesn't mean that we are to sit back and be less active in our Christian faith. In fact, we have more time to read and reflect on the Bible, to pray and connect with God. We also have time to connect with others, be it by phone or by sending a letter or card, a card of encouragement. We can still be witnesses and share God's love with others. This may be lockdown, but it's not sit down. The disciples were told to wait, and we are waiting at the moment. But we're waiting, but we can still be active. Keep one another in mind. Keep praying together. Keep on loving one another, and keep connected with God and with one another. Amen, and may God bless to us this meditation on his word. Let's reflect as we sing together a lovely hymn of faith and witness, which is particularly apt at this difficult time. Hymn 519, Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven, to earth come down.
Before our prayers for others today, I would like to thank Ian and the team who put this online service together and to encourage you to let others know about how to access the service via YouTube or through the website. I'm still looking for pictures to go up here in the cornerstone and to be able to fill all our windows with brightly coloured artwork. I'm also looking for photographs to be sent in uh, by email of your gardens or your daily walks or ongoing projects in which you are involved in. And again, with your permission, I would like to be able to put these up on the, the website so that others who are not able to get out and about can enjoy and see what is going on in the village at this time. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday and the new moderator of the Church of Scotland, Martin Fair, will be leading an online service, I believe, at 10.30. And this can be accessed through the Church of Scotland website. We also plan to have a link via our own Bishopton Parish Church website for this service. I would encourage as many of you as possible to tune in to this service as we as a national church celebrate the birthday of the church and worship together with one another in different congregations. I do still plan to record a service that will be shown after this for those who are not able to connect uh, to the, the website. Looking a little further ahead, I am hoping to try out a coffee and chat opportunity via Zoom after the family service on the 7th of June. Anyone who would be interested in joining us, in us uh, joining with us in this event, please can you email me uh, at my Bishopton Kirk email uh, address and I will make arrangements for you to be able to join with us. Jesus, in our reading today, prayed not only for unity amongst the disciples, but he also prayed that God would keep the disciples safe. So let's draw near to God in our prayers for others. Let's pray together. Loving God, in this time of uncertainty, of social isolation, this time of loss of life, of loss of financial security, we come to you to seek your comfort and reassurance. Today we pray for those who live alone, for those who are unable to meet with friends or family, for those who find each day a long day and long for company, to see a familiar face, a friendly smile, receive a hug from a loved one. We pray for those who are living in flats or homes with no gardens, where families are cramped together in living conditions, where tempers are frayed because of confined space. We pray for parents who feel overwhelmed at the pressure of homeschooling and trying to keep their children occupied and safe finding time to do things with them when they have much to do themselves. We pray for those who are living with mental health issues or caring for loved ones with memory problems and are finding this time of social isolation difficult to cope with. Loving Father, we remember all those who are physically affected by this virus, those who are ill at home or in hospital, for those who are not able to receive visits from family at this time when they really need them to be at their side. We pray for families who have loved ones who are they're worried about or concerned about because of the isolation. Loving God, we remember especially today those who have been bereaved in our community and beyond for all that mourn especially when funeral services are restricted in number to just immediate family, where services are restricted in format also. Compassionate Lord, we ask that you will be with all those who have been bereaved. Give them hope and comfort. Compassionate Lord, 
and caring God, we pray for our NHS staff and all members of care staff in care homes or the community, for all those who put their own lives at risk in order to care and nurse the vulnerable, the infirm, the frail, in hospitals and in our communities. We pray for members in our congregation in care homes, those in Ailsa Lodge, Erskine Hospital, Little Inch Care Home and Robertson House. We pray for our government and political leaders in Westminster and Holyrood, and may they act wisely and with integrity to ensure the best possible care and precaution are taken to keep our nation and people safe. We pray for medical researchers and scientists trying to find a vaccine or medicine to reduce the effects of this potentially deadly virus. Loving God, we ask that you will support and comfort those who are anxious about future employment and their finances. We pray that you will continue to work and provide us with all the vital and pro uh, provisions that we need in our community, the local supermarket, the local shops and pharmacy and post office. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all these people that are providing for us their time. Help those who are supporting neighbours or friends by picking up shopping or doing other necessary items or things for them for those who are being shielded. Loving God, this coronavirus has affected all of our lives in many different ways, but help us to have faith in you, that you will bring us out of this storm and that you, will, as you promise, will shine your light in the darkest places of life and beyond into the darkness of death. Heavenly Father, be with each one of us this we ask and pray. Keep us united as a church family and keep us safe. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We conclude our service today by singing hymn 113, God the Father of Creation.
the Lord who calmed the storm for his first disciples, calm the storm of, in our lives. May the darkness of anxiety give way to the hope of his light. Go now in peace and in love, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and evermore. Amen.